thank you, Wenatchee Valley Museum and Cultural Center. My name is Randy Lewis. Uh, good morning, folks. This is all leading into a an Indian Thanksgiving. By that, I mean every year when I was a kid, when I was a child, and we lived here at Wenatchee Heights, my grandmother would have an end of the season feast gathering. And we had relatives that lived up the Chumstick, up at Leavenworth and down at Rock Island and over on the coast who would come to the uh, Grange Hall on, at Squilchuck and grandma would cook and have samples, or I, I wouldn't say samples, but she would have salmon, king salmon, dog salmon or chum, silvers, pinks, sockeye, and steelhead. She would have a sampling or how would you say it, a representative fish from all the salmon groups. And <clears throat> there were times like here at the museum when we had a gathering for elders in which we didn't have the salmon pit built. And our Wenatchee advisory committee came and they used the ovens here and they did a wonderful job. And what we do, I've explained to you, when we get the first salmon, we take it and we generally bake it in front or on top of a grill over a fire pit. Now, we don't use a lot. We want the salmon to speak for itself. We just use oil and salt and pepper, that's it. We don't use lemon. Lemon actually was designed to kill parasites and microorganisms. That's the reason lemon was always used in fish. So we just use salt and pepper. And what we do is we take the fillet, the fillet of fish. You know, you fillet the fish and you get a fillet of salmon. That's it, the process and the product. Okay, we take the fillet of salmon and we oil it and we put salt and pepper on it. And we always keep our fire pit the salmon about three feet above the fire because we we first start the fire we use hardwood uh apple wood is really good it's one of the best and we start it with cedar one of the sacred plants we start it with cedar then we use alder but here we use apple wood because it's so accessible and so good and we start a roaring fire and we let it burn down to the glowing hot embers. We put the grating on top over the fire and then we lay the salmon face down first. I mean the inside out, the inside, the meat side down with the skin showing on top. And then we wait, we let it cook and we can tell by pressure, we put our finger on it and when you feel the thing bubbling when you feel the juices and the fats bubbling underneath the skin, then we flip it over and then we continue to bake it. It doesn't have to bake long or broil long. You can flip it over in your oven and broil it at that point because it's already cooked through most of the fish. You flip it over and then you broil it. And it doesn't take long. You don't want to dry salmon out. You don't want to overcook it. And then you serve it. We say our prayers before we put it on and we say our prayers afterwards. Well, that's basically how we do it on the grill. I also have the salmon sticks, which we skewer the salmon and then we can prop those up in the, in the soil around the fire pit. Well, we can't do it here because we're doing it out in the parking lot and it's really hard unless we bore some holes into the, into the surface. So that's how we prepare it. And then we would serve it with, with uh, camas, with huckleberries, with choke cherries, uh, Indian potatoes. That would be our feast. And um, a pudding that's made out of black lichen, black moss, which tastes like licorice, like a, like a licorice pudding. And for those who love licorice, they just go crazy on this stuff. For other people who don't eat licorice, uh, I go crazy for it. <laughs> Not. <laughs> I love it. 
So that's how we cook our salmon. That's how you will be able to prepare your salmon. One of the best ways to do it when you put it in the oven is put your, uh, put your heat on high, like on 425 to 450 degrees, but cover it with foil to begin with. That way it traps the heat and it cooks more evenly. Then pull the foil off after a few minutes, test your salmon. If you feel it bubbling, then take the foil off, flip your fish over with the meat side up, and then you hit the broil and broil it. And it doesn't take but a few minutes, four or five minutes for it to, you know, to be done. We take it out, cut it up, yum. Right, right, tlachas, uh, Randy Lewis, kayachan. Welcome. Um, this doesn't look like much right now, but what we're in the process of doing is building the salmon pit for our salmon barbecue, our salmon, our salmon feast. I'm going to call it a feast, although some people say it's not a technically a feast. But for us, for our purposes, it's a salmon feast, and I'm preparing the salmon. And this is a salmon feast coming virtually, virtually live to all you people, to you museum followers, to our community, to the. Colville tribe, the Wenatchee people, and I hope he can hear me through this. I'm trying to project and as be as clear as possible. And what I want to say is, is we're in a, we're trying to observe universal precautions, social distancing, and so it it really cuts back on what we can do as far as a feast but it's, it's something that we have to do. We're recognizing and we're honoring this, this holy creation that you call salmon. And it's a traditional dinner that my folks, my grandfolks who were Wenatchee would have every year. And so you just bear with us. We're gonna be hauling in some cinder blocks. Yes, cinder blocks are not traditional but they are now, it's our tradition. <laughs> because, uh, what do I say, we're in an urban area, so we, you know, we fight the wars with the, with the weapons that we have. So thank you very much and bear with us and you'll, we'll walk you through this, okay? Welcome, welcome back. As you can see, we have a form, a foundation here that we've created using cinder blocks or concrete blocks. And generally, we have it about 36 to 39 inches off the ground. And this is for the salmon pit. And the reason we do this is because we're used to doing volumes, huge volumes of fish, anywhere from 300 to three tons of fish. And generally the pit will be three to four racks in length with four people working it. And traditionally we would use sticks, skewers to skewer the fish and stick into the sand and prop them around the fire, which is culturally um, the way that the Wenatchees did it. We didn't have racks like this. But since we're doing such huge volumes usually, we've chosen to use the metal racks. And plus the salmon sticks, uh, they don't stick into the surface well. <laughs> but if you ever go to Laconer to Swinomish, they do it this way now too. But they lay their skewers like shish kebabs <laughs> on the racks, just so they have part of the tradition. Matter of fact, when I got my salmon sticks, I went over to La Conner and got them because their ocean spray, the hardwood that they use, is much bigger. It's bigger and straighter. And we use ocean spray because it's called ironwood. It does not burn. Some of my salmon sticks I've got, I've had for 50 or 60 years. They used to be my grandma's. And they're still, they're still as you know, vital as ever. So Traditionally, what we'll do is we'll build traditionally, I mean, 
customarily what we do is we build our our pit over a sandy area well here we bring in the sand and we put the sand on the inside and then we have the blessing of it just before we put the salmon down so welcome to our salmon feast thank you